yourselves also more at risk for clients, for example, that might record our sessions with them electronically? You can, in your informed consent, ask people to not record or to let you know if they want to record, in which case you can make a decision in the moment. But you cannot physically stop them. I could be recording this on my phone right now, everything I say and you say. If I were on camera, you wouldn't know that. So what you can do as part of the informed consent is have the person agree that they will let you know and then do the best you can. You can't be sure, but you can help deter that. Why wouldn't I want to record is there are ways that people can take recordings and alter them and make it sound like you said something you never said and then use that against you. And if they're not effective in court, they actually can do that through social media. All kinds of things can go wrong. But let's focus on what you really can do. What you can do is ask for it in informed consent and then leave it on them. I just wonder if it would be helpful for us as clinicians to be recording the session that we are oh, doing. That's a very good point, too. We generally don't record in our offices. The standard online is to not record either because you never really know where that's going to go. I remember talking with a psychiatrist that worked at the VA about a decade ago. He told me, oh, Marlene, I, I can't believe what happened last week at the office. We found an old codec in the back room. There were many, many different psychotherapy sessions that were recorded on that device. Things can happen. It's very difficult to predict. So we generally don't record unless we're court mandated. There are ways that clinicians have done that quite legitimately, but I would not advise for children because kids can do things that are pretty harebrained and 10 years later, those recordings come back to haunt them. So generally, clinicians don't do that.